Sometimes I think the best way to make a video is just to make it and not even worry about how bad it's going to be. And this one could be bad. It could it could get horrible here for a moment. But I like to have fun. The thing is that a lot of things in this world are the result of the law of association. We associate things with other things. See, the thing in religion is we're told a lot of things that are told to us as if they were absolute facts. As if someone knew for a fact these things were true. Now, here's the thing. You can have multiple religions and everybody, but let's just focus on Christianity only. And I'm by no means any kind of religious scholar, so I'm not going to speak in scholarly terms about things. But you have so many different religions who have so many different views on what's going to happen. But the basic ideal is really the same. If you follow our church and follow our thing and do all the stuff that we tell you to do, you're going to be in this wonderful, wonderful place at the end of your life. And it's nice to hear that. It's nice to think it. And it would be nice to think that you happen to pick the right religion. That you picked the right choice. You got the right thing. It would be nice to think that. To think you pick, you got on a winning team, so to speak. You know, it would be like, you know, it's like if you were a baseball player. Let's say you were just coming out of college and you got drafted. So I mentioned baseball because I'm a big baseball fan. And you get drafted onto the team that's going to go and win the World Series. You know, you, that's what you're told. There's like 30 other teams, but you got on the team that's going to be the number one team. And you're going to be the hero of that team, too. And you're going to do well in this thing. Yeah, you told a story. The question is, is it true? Is it true? Now, here's the thing. People can tell you things, and it could be true. But then again, it might not be. You're told so many things. The other day, there was this guy. I know he was a Jehovah Witness. He, although they didn't have it. You know, he didn't say it. And, but I know, because I've seen these things, and I know pretty much what it is, this book he gave me. You know, and This is not to pick on the Jehovah Witnesses, but I used to be in them, in that organization. The thing is that you told a lot of stories about what's going to happen and what things mean and what the world is and how every, you know, the world is explained to you in a certain way. And lucky you that you happen to be with the right organization that's going to be favored by God. Lucky you, <laughs> you know, really, seriously. And that's the truth. And that's how you think about it. And you feel lucky. You feel, wow, I am so fortunate that I happen to be with the right organization. And those who aren't with our organization, they're in the wrong. So the world is divided into two things. There are people who are on the right path. And there's only one right path. And then there are people who are on the wrong path. And you, you feel bad about the people who are on the wrong path. And your purpose, your reason for even being is to get those people who are on the wrong path to come over to the right path. you got to work hard to do that. You know, and if you do that, God is going to favor you. He's going to favor you. You're going to get favorable judgments on Judgment Day. And you're going to wind up in that wonderful place. That's the story. You know what religions sell? And yes, they are selling something. They're selling a story. But see, here's the thing. And this is my point. It's not just religion that does that. Religion isn't the only thing. Politics do that too. You know, vote for this person, and he's going to make your life better. He or she is going to make your life better. I know that soon there's going to be the elections for governor. And there's a lot of things going on in the state of Illinois. And I'm sure that whoever runs for governor is going to promise the world. And I can almost assure you that whatever it is that they promise, no matter who it is, they're not going to be able to deliver on what they promise. And that's always the case. 
politicians seldom deliver on what they promise. But they will make the promise because the point is to get your cooperation. See, this is the thing with religion. To get people to cooperate. To get people to participate. To get people to do things. This is the whole point. The point of religion isn't to deliver on the promises or even to tell the truth. And yes, that's the fact. Just like with politics, it's not about telling the truth. It's about getting the vote. In religion, mostly, it's not about you know, getting people, telling people the truth. It's about getting members in the organization. Getting people to be happy in the organization. To feel satisfied with the organization. You know, if you run for a political office, you might run by promising the world. And you get elected. And during your time in office, you don't really fulfill all the promises. But then you come up for re-election. And you promise some more. Because people forget. You make more promises. And you talk about how your opponent is going to make things worse. He's going to take you down a worse path. And I'm going to take you up this great path. Yeah, it's promises. And you get reelected. And you don't fulfill your promise. And then again, we go through this repeated cycle all over again. Every election. You know. You promise something. You fail on the promise. And then you make more promises. And then you fail on the promise. And then you make more promises. And it's the same thing with religion. They promise things that can't possibly happen. And then that's it. Now, I said before, I'm not an atheist. And this, and this is not a debate about religion. It just has to do with promises. Life has promises in it at times. You know, we're told things even by our education system. If you do this and this and this... This is the kind of life you're going to live. And then when you do this, this, and this, it doesn't happen. And things aren't as good as they are promised. They're not as satisfying. And, you know, you discover that. There's promises all the time that are made. That's one thing I don't like to do is promise and tell you some formula that if you do this, you're going to live a happy life. You know, for years, I've actually been writing a book. And at some point, I wanted to write something like that. Like, here's the formula for a happy life. No, I don't have a formula. I only have a formula that works for me. And it's not even a formula. You know, I do things that work well for me. But I learned to see things realistically. That one of the most important things that you have to learn in life is you can't be happy all the time. You cannot be happy 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. You will have tragedies. You will have bad things happen. And you will have moments when you get angry. You know, there will be moments when everything isn't going to be so wonderful. But, you know, you can do good. You can do pretty good. You can be happier than average, but not perfect. You can do things. You can avoid a lot of pitfalls in life. But the most important thing is to be honest and to realize that life got its painful moments in it. It has moments that are painful. See, I don't want to give people promises about things. And, and one thing is, I, even though I'm a person who believes in God, and in a certain way I'm a religious person, I don't believe in false and fake type of religiosity, which I see a great deal of, this sort of absolute fairy tale fantasy type stuff. I, I just, you know, I don't believe in that. I really don't, and I don't think I ever have, and I don't think I ever would or ever could. I don't believe in false assurances that everything is going to be perfect. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I don't know what happens when you die. I really don't know except that you did. And even then, it, do, does your consciousness survive your death? I don't know. I guess I'll know. I'll know when I die, you know. I'll only know when I die. 
but you know when people start writing things in books like this and they start saying well this is what's going to happen and that's what's going to happen and they have all these wonderful pictures I mean of things As the guy who gave me this book was telling me all about it. he was pointing to the pictures and saying well this is what God promised and this is what he is this going to happen and, you know it's like I wanted to say something to him but I was nice and polite and I listened to him because I was in the organization I used to be a part of that. I never got on the streets and sold, you know, hand out the books and the magazines, but I know it's, you're given these stories. And you're told things, and you're not given any real evidence or anything that indicates that this is really the case. Or why these people know it and other people don't know it. I mean, they'll explain to you why they do. But it's not a satisfactory answer. That I can assure you. And that's the truth. That's the way it is. You know, it's it's like politics. It's just like politics. It's just like advertisers who tell you if you buy this car, you'll be happy. If you buy this TV, you'll be happy. If you buy this computer or this electronic device or this app, you'll be happy. Your life will be complete. No, it won't. It won't be. Because once you get it, you'll be dissatisfied. And they say, well, what you need is the latest upgrade. <laughs> what you need is the next upgrade. And the next upgrade. And you're always striving. As somebody once said, you're striving but never arriving. You have to learn that sometimes what you have right here, this is it. Think of it that way. As Walt Whitman said, the, the poet Walt Whitman. Because I know there's some singer named Walt Whitman. But the poet from the 1800s, <laughs> he said, there is no more heaven or hell than there is right now. And that's the best way to think about it. If you realize that, then you can you got something to work with. You really have something you can realistically work with.